Man, I just can't stay away from this topic, huh? I mean, it's why we all tune into Hell's Kitchen, right? Anyway, who's ready for some crazy food adventures? Strap in and make sure you're not eating anything, since these concoctions are sure to make your stomach turn. Because we're back again with the most disgusting dishes to have ever been plated on Hell's Kitchen. You've been warned. Let's get started with this contestant whose signature dish challenge didn't quite go as planned and ended up destroying Ramsay's taste buds. We're talking about Matt Siegel. So here's what happened. Dude was the sixth contestant in line, eager to impress the man himself with his culinary masterpiece. Now, here comes the twist. Matt unveiled his exotic tartare dish, which boasted raw venison, diver scallops, caviar, and, uh, grated white chocolate. Oh boy, here we go. So, the guy actually thought this mix would blow Ramsay away, right? Well, that didn't exactly shake out his plan. Here is a quick look at Ramsey's reaction, and you can be the judge yourself. Just about to be punked. Yep, he flat out asked if he was being pranked. That's the level of disbelief we're talking about. With Ramsey's incredulity growing by the second, he even asked Matt something crazy. White chocolate. Do you smoke? Cigarettes? No. Wow. That's how baffled he was by the dish. And honestly, can you even blame him for it? Anyway, despite the horrifying presentation, Ramsey mustered up the courage to taste it. But oh boy, was it a disaster. Within seconds, Ramsey was gagging and spitting it out. I mean, I can't even watch this. Dang, poor Ramsey. He was so pissed that he even claimed it was even worse than you or I probably expected. Must be one of the worst combinations I've ever tasted in 21 years of cooking. Which is honestly huge since white chocolate, come on. But here's the kicker. Matt, despite Ramsey's harsh verdict, couldn't quite wrap his head around what Ramsey didn't like about his dish. Wait, Chef Ramsey didn't like about the dish. I'm a little boggled on that. Dude. Did you even give your dish a taste before actually presenting it to the guy? If not, well, you should have. And if yes, then how the heck did you even reach Hell's Kitchen with taste buds that had the gall to tell you that was anywhere near good? And I mean, like, white chocolate. Lord have mercy. Talk about being overconfident about a disastrous dish. It's safe to say this signature dish challenge didn't exactly land him the standing ovation he was hoping for. But it definitely left everyone grimacing in disbelief, especially Ramsey. That's gotta count for something, right? But you won't believe this next dish. It was compared to dog food, that's how terrible it was. Just like that, in the midst of the 20 ingredients challenge, Roseanne Fama stepped up to the plate. This has made a lot of people very angry and has been widely regarded as a bad move. Anyway, when Matt got sidelined due to an injury, she teamed up with Christina and Corey to keep the momentum going. You know, despite today's topic, gotta give props for stepping up when it was crunch time. However, when it came time for judgment, she was the last contender for her team, going head to head with Lou Ross. And what did she throw together? Well, take a look at this. This is a pan seared veal bone in with a cream sauce. Pan seared veal accompanied by a cream sauce and a combination of onion, watercress, and roasted potatoes. It sounds pretty good on paper, but Ramsey unfortunately had a somewhat different opinion. Be clumsy. It's the kind of dish you want to take the dog out for dinner as well at the same time. You eat the meat and give the fucking dog the bone. Oops. As you saw, he wasn't exactly thrilled, dubbing it as clumsy and even went to the extent of comparing it to dog food. Not exactly the response you'd hope for, especially on Hell's Kitchen. Though, maybe she could give Sade some pointers. Despite the critique, the red team still somehow managed to emerge victorious, securing the win since the blue team didn't manage to use all 20 ingredients. And what was the reward? A swanky photo shoot for In Touch Weekly Magazine. You know, sometimes it feels nice to get carried by your crew. 
But this next dish was so disgusting, yet somehow it was priced at a staggering $300. Unbelievable. Now, here's a signature dish challenge tale that took a surprising turn. Colleen Cleek was up next for judgment, landing at the 11th spot in line. But little did she know, her dish was about to provoke quite the reaction from Ramsey. Who's cooked the diapers? No diapers, sir. That smoked chicken enchiladas with poblano cream sauce. My name is Colleen. As Ramsey quipped about one of the dishes in the lineup resembling a diaper, mmm, yummy, Colleen boldly identified herself as the creator. Props for sticking to your guns, at least. And well, let's see what she whipped up. I feed big Nebraska boys. Trust Would you me. like me to get you a bite? No, 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 I'll bite it myself. Smoked chicken enchiladas with poblano cream sauce. Even after Ramsey tore into her, she had no shame in sharing that she charged a whopping $300 for her culinary expertise, even though she hadn't attended culinary school herself. But like I said, Ramsey wasn't holding back. Shocked by the size of her dish, its taste, and of course, the horrendous amount of money she charged for her, uh, expertise, he absolutely went in on her. Ah. Well, it's safe to say that he didn't mince his words. Oh no. Like, he flat out said this. Do you seriously charge $300 to teach people how to make that crap? Yes, yes, chef. Ramsey couldn't fathom the idea of paying $300 for her talents and remarked that he needed some plastic wrap for his rear end. Not a good look. For Colleen, of course, but I don't think I'd want to see Ramsey like that either. But you know what? Even after feeling the sting of Ramsey's pointed critique, Colleen wasn't of a mind to stay silent. I teach manners too, chef. Say that again? The nerve to fire back, even after being laid so low by Ramsey himself. Guess she didn't bother teaching culinary etiquette in those overpriced classes of hers, huh? Well, Ramsey, never one to shy away from a retort, told her this. Okay, please, Miss Manners, off back in line. Yeah, I know. This man can seriously come up with some crazy ass nicknames on the spot. I gotta say, I admire his improv chops. Like, Miss Manners? Classic. Though, the best part was when he dropped the act and just told her to fuck off back in line. Phew, that should set her straight. And I wouldn't be surprised if she lost a few aspiring students thanks to her little stint on the show. Ramsey should be given a medal for sacrificing his health for our entertainment. I mean, some of these dishes are absolutely repulsive. Guess which dish had the great chef hurl his guts out? Like this. And hey, fair warning, don't watch this video while having dinner. Well, let's continue from where I left off, shall we? Okay. So this is the exotic tartare dish by Matt Siegel from season four. He was boasting to the cameras about how his dish was gonna rock Ramsey's world. And I think it did, but not in a way he was expecting. So what was so exotic about it, do you ask? It was a mind-boggling combo of raw venison, diver scallops, caviar, and, wait for it, grated white chocolate. Ramsey couldn't believe his ears and questioned if he was being punked. I mean, what were you smoking to come up with this combination? Man, I got secondhand embarrassment watching this. Oh, that was ruthless. Now, you'd think this would bring Matt's ego down a notch, right? Well, think again. Matt, bless his heart, couldn't comprehend what Ramsey found so repulsive about his creation. The poor guy was genuinely perplexed. To be fair, Matt, you put white chocolate on seafood. Like, white chocolate on seafood. Duh. Does that ring a bell, or should I ring it for you? But at least Matt cooked it through. Unlike this next contestant who was so overconfident that he ended up not cooking his dish enough. In season 11, episode 10, during the quinceanera planning challenge, John Scallion had a word with Michael Langdon, reminding him to ensure that his meat was prepared in time since the clock was ticking away. Determined, Michael took charge and prepared a steak dish, becoming the final contender from the blue team to present his creation up for judgment. He was up against Amanda Giblet, and Ramsey actually liked her dish. Michael, however, felt that his flavors were superior. 
but were they? Let's hear it. You know what they call that? Bald-faced lines. Upon closer inspection, it was evident that the steak was severely undercooked. Oh, the horror. Blood still lingered on the plate, signaling that the dish was far from being ready. While Michael insisted it wasn't blood, the truth was hard to ignore. I mean, what do you think this is? His dish was promptly criticized for its raw and undercooked state, much to Michael's frustration. I don't know about you, but this made me throw up, and I think I can't eat steaks for a few weeks now. Not exaggerating even a bit. And by the way, I had a field day learning about all the bacteria that raw meat is contaminated with. When ingested, they can make you really sick. Like, really, really sick. I am talking diarrhea, stomach cramps, vomiting, and a fever, as per the CDC. This can strike between 6 and 24 hours after eating raw, undercooked meat. And it lasts between 24 hours and many days, depending on the type of bacteria. So yeah, Chef Michael, for the sake of your family's health, I hope you're only taking over grilling duties whenever there's a barbecue. Now it's time to meet Krissa Schmerler. She may have seemed kind-hearted, but let's just say Hell's Kitchen wasn't exactly her cup of tea. Spoiler alert, in the 14th season, she landed a not-so-impressive 18th place. So that should tell you a lot about her culinary expertise. She presented a ginger-crusted chicken breast during the signature dish challenge inspired by, wait for it, the cookie aisle at the grocery store. Yep. You heard that right. Ramsey couldn't help himself and covered his face, bursting into uncontrollable laughter. And guess what? The entire audience joined in, turning poor Chris's moment into an awkward laugh fest. Oh, the embarrassment. Ramsey couldn't help but make a cheeky remark. I mean, he couldn't even manage to swallow one bite. Clearly, that was an abomination, and she just scored one point out of five. To make matters worse, Krissa even told the cameras that she's not used to people spitting out her food. Honestly, I felt bad for her here. Tough break, Krissa. But what you served was simply inedible. Oh, by the way, this reminds me of something similar that happened in season 16. When Jessica Boynton nervously took her place as the eighth contestant against Andrew Pierce from the red team to face Ramsey's judgment. Little did she know that her risotto dish was about to take an unexpected turn. Ah, it's okay, chefs. Spit happens. I, I mean, shit happens. And this is no big deal in Hell's Kitchen, as each and every day turns out to be a learning experience. Speaking of disasters, remember this episode in Season 3 where Jen Yamola went dumpster diving? Yep, she retrieved the spaghetti she had thrown out in the garbage and proceeded to wash it. She almost actually cooked it again and claimed she would have served it too. That's easily one of the worst food offenses. So what happened is that Joanna Dunn was about to kill someone by serving rancid crab. So Ramsey threw her out and put Jen and Julia on the appetizer station. They were able to get some dishes out, but after she tossed out cooked spaghetti which she thought were not needed, what do you know? Ramsey asked for some on the very next ticket. In a panic, she grabbed some tossed spaghetti from the trash, but all thanks to Julia who stopped Jen dead in her tracks with absolutely no hesitation at all. At least someone was thinking straight. Indeed. Jen's lucky Ramsey didn't catch her. The comments on the Hell's Kitchen channel show how angry the viewers were. Some believe that she should have been 86th from the show after this incident. Others question that if she was willing to do this on camera, imagine what her hygiene standards are when nobody's watching. Yeah. Food for thought, right? I can't understand what it is with all these contestants taking shortcuts. And here comes another one. You absolutely cannot cook a proper gumbo in 45 minutes. But Antonia Bregman from season 8 tried anyway. As you would expect, her Mardi Gras gumbo turned out to be a culinary catastrophe of epic proportions. When she proudly unveiled the dish to Ramsay, it was met with sheer shock and disbelief. Despite describing it as a plate of liquid shit, he bravely took a bite. What could go wrong, right? Well, everything. It was inedible. Even people on the internet are convinced that it must have tasted like actual shit or worse. 
And then this happened. Have you tasted that? No, I didn't get a chance to taste it, chef. Seriously? Who in their right mind wouldn't taste their own dish before getting it judged by Ramsay? That's a risky move in a high-stakes competition like Hell's Kitchen. To add insult to injury, Ramsay decided to subject the rest of the contestants to Antonia's gastro-adventure. If it wasn't already bad that he got sick. And now, he decided to share that misery with Antonia's competitors. To put it mildly, none of them were impressed. Rob took the opportunity to unleash his creative criticism, saying this. It was completely repulsive. I would have rather had a cat shit in my mouth than have eaten that any further. Nona and Boris weren't faring any better, with the flavors threatening to send them over the edge. Even Vinny couldn't find any redeeming qualities, likening it to slurping down a big ol' bowl of mud. Easily one of the worst, most repulsive dishes served on the show. If hell is real, I am sure in the ninth circle, they make you eat this. Obviously, she earned no points, and Ramsay declared it as the worst dish of the day, leading the red team to lose the signature dish challenge. And what a way to lose a challenge. While scrolling through the net, I found this Reddit user by the name StreetCommunity922, who asked viewers a million dollar question. Between Matt from Season 4's Exotic Tartar and Antonia from Season 8's Gumbo, which was the worst signature dish in your opinion? The responses on the thread are hilarious, and an overwhelming number of them think that the answer's Matt. They say that Antonia at least had a concept that was executed horrifically. Matt's dish was awful, from conceptualization to execution. What do you think? Which dish would you rather taste? As for me, I'll just pass, thank you. Anyway, speaking of disgusting dishes, I think I'd spontaneously combust out of embarrassment if I had to present something as hideous as this. Wow. Props to Jen to stand there and take in all the criticism without hurling excuses because she had nothing to do with that lame-ass duck breast. That was all on Melissa Furpo. You see, what happened is during the wedding planning challenge in season three, Melissa proposed a change that left everyone raising their eyebrows. Instead of sticking with lamb, she suggested the women should go quackers and use duck as the main dish. Jen, being the cautious one, expressed concerns about cooking time. But the team ultimately went with Melissa's decision, because she was being very bossy about it. How I wish they didn't, but the damage was done. When it came to preparing the duck breast, Julia confidently decided to sear it. However, Melissa quacked in with a different idea, leaving poor Julia feeling a bit plucked. Not only that, Melissa also managed to throw a few feathers at Bonnie Moorhead along the way. It was enough to make anyone feel a bit ruffled, with conflicting instructions taking flight in the kitchen. Amidst all this squabbling, Julia took the duck breast out of the oven to let it rest. But in a moment of kitchen confusion, she accidentally placed it right back in to keep it warm. What followed was more squawking and bickering. Even Rock, with his keen ears, couldn't help but hope that the feathery argument between the Hell's Bietches would lead to their downfall. I mean, just look at him, you guys. So, as the cooking reached its crescendo, Julia and Melissa discovered their unfortunate truth. The duck breast was overcooked. But did Melissa take responsibility? Nope. When Ramsay asked both the teams if they were happy, the woman squawked in unison that they were not. Julia, pointing her culinary finger, blamed Melissa, claiming she had been acting like a kitchen dictator. Melissa, however, defended herself asserting that she wasn't trying to juggle everything at once. Ramsey swiftly reminded her that he never appointed her as head chef, emphasizing that the challenge was all about teamwork. It was time to break free from those ducking egos. D sorry, autocorrect. I think you heard it right, though. As the news broke that the wedding couple would be tasting their creations alongside GR, Melissa's feathers stood on end. She was horrified. Desperately trying to convince GR, dishes should be kept under lock and key. But GR turned a deaf ear to her concerns. The show must go on. It was a humiliating experience for the entire red team. And let's be honest, the blue team winning that challenge, ah, too easy. There was no competition at all. And well, Rock kinda already knew about this outcome, right? 
He was just as confident as Royce Wagner during the intense four-ingredient challenge in season 10. The only difference being, Royce Wagner's confidence backfired. You see, Royce had set his sights on the luxurious lobster as the star of his dish. His masterpiece? A whole poached lobster infused with saffron and thyme. After taking a bite of his own creation, he seemed very convinced that it was freaking delicious. As the final blue team member to face the judges, Royce squared off against Christina Wilson. Little did he know, a hairy situation was about to unfold. Douglas Keane discovered this. A long hair lurking within the dish sent shockwaves of disgust through the room. An irritated Clemenza Caserta couldn't help but ask why anyone would dare to serve a hair-infested dish to a Michelin star chef. Yeah, pretty gross, right? Ramsey, never one to mince his words, demanded an explanation from Royce. Royce, perplexed and caught off guard, claimed innocence, insisting he had no idea how the hair found its way into his creation. But wait, there was more. Michael Simarusti, like a culinary detective, revealed that the lobster still had its not-so-appetizing shit sack intact. Yikes, there goes my appetite for dinner. Clearly, Royce's dish fell short of expectations. He managed to score only three stars, leaving the team astounded. Meanwhile, Kimmy, in a moment of pure disbelief, couldn't help but ask this. Royce just served hair and a shit sack to Michelin star chefs? Like, what the f are you thinking, dude? Same question, Kimmy. I have the same bloody question. Up next, though, is Michael Mike Aresta. And ah, uh, where do I even begin? He stepped up to the plate as the fourth contestant from the blue team in season 12. He faced off against Kashia, hoping to impress the discerning palate of GR. Little did he know, his dish was about to hit a rather cheesy bump. Mike proudly presented his creation, a plate of tortellini with tomatoes. However, when GR inquired about the filling for his tortellini, Mike's confession left everyone a bit shell-shocked. The interrogation continued as Ramsey pressed him about the tomato sauce. Mike reluctantly revealed that he had used canned tomatoes. Man, that's a lazy attempt. The disappointment in his eyes was palpable as he angrily tossed the dish into the trash, dismissing it as a joke. Can you even blame him? Gabriel couldn't help but question why on earth Mike would serve Ramsey packaged food. Yeah, anyone who knows Ramsey knows how much he hates canned food. I mean, it's an atrocity. Coming back, in this round, Mike's culinary skills fell short compared to Kashia's offering, leading to his defeat. His pride was wounded, and he couldn't fathom why GR would casually discard his dish as if it were packaged dog food. Voicing his frustration, Mike said, I'm a little insulted. It's not like it's packaged dog food. But Ramsey, never one to shy away from confrontation, swiftly called him up to the front, demanding an explanation for his outburst. Caught off guard, Mike found himself at a loss for words. Ramsey, not one to tolerate insubordination, made it clear that if Mike had anything to say, he should say it to his face, not behind his back. And just like some of the other contestants we've talked about so far, this one's signature dish challenge didn't exactly hit the mark. And the reason? Well, it's safe to say their dish wasn't exactly sensational. So, be ready for a taste of determination and maybe a touch of overconfidence and like way too many blackberries. Lacey D'Angelo stepped up to the plate, set to show the world that she was no slouch in the kitchen and could hold her own with the best of them. And she was the fifth in line. Ramsey took one look at that dish of hers and had to ask where on earth it came from. Was the dude overreacting? Well, take a look at it yourselves. Chicken and blackberries, where did that come from? It's just a dish we made at work. And where's work? I do corporate dining. Yeah, chicken and, like I said earlier, blackberry sauce. That's already got me raising my eyebrows, but I could at least see how it could maybe work. But wait till you hear this. It was apparently something that came straight from her workplace, a corporate dining buffet-style restaurant. And how do you think Ramsey reacted? Well, you can probably figure out that much on your own, but for posterity. That's definitely corporate. You serve, they eat. Yes, sir. Straight after, they vomit. Yes. He couldn't handle how awful it tasted and quickly spat it out. 
bluntly stating that anyone who dared to eat it would likely end up vomiting themselves. And I can tell he came pretty close himself, so he wasn't kidding. Well, let's just say it wasn't the praise she was probably hoping for, but Lacey wasn't ready to throw in the towel just yet. I'm just hoping that he gives me enough of a chance to stick around and show him that, you know, I, I can definitely do a lot better. She maintained that the dish didn't truly reflect her skills and hoped Ramsey would give her a chance to stick around and showcase what she was really made of. Gotta admire her determination in the face of a less than impressed Ramsey. If it were me, well, I'd have probably thrown in the towel right then and there. But Lacey was made of stronger stuff than me, for what it's worth. In hindsight, though, I think Ramsey should have picked another contestant to stay in the competition, cause turns out, Lacey didn't exactly have the grit or determination to handle the challenges the competition demanded of her. But that's a story for another day. Now, this next dish took a surprising twist right from the start. Harry Keep from season nine stepped into the culinary spotlight as the very first contender from the red team to face Ramsey's judgment, going head to head against Will. A tall order for even the best chefs. She presented her dish and oh man, Ramsey's expression said it all. The chicken fried ribeye with Yukon gold mash and white truffle cream gravy. I actually have a little sugar in there. Stop, say that again. I have sugar in there. That's what my mother always did. It was like he questioned the idea of even bringing her onto the show in the first place. The disappointment in his eyes was as clear as day. And you could practically hear his inner monologue going, what in the world is this? It was a rough moment, no doubt. Like, who the hell adds sugar to their mashed potatoes? Maybe like some caramelized onions or something, but sugar? Get that out of here. Yeah, it. Carrie remained convinced that Ramsey would be a fan, boldly likening her dish to an orgasmic experience for the mouth. That's some big talk for a bunch of gloopy mashed potatoes, I'll tell ya. But with suspense hanging thick in the air, Ramsey finally took a bite. Love it because it's delicious. It's like an orgasm in your mouth. Come on. So, did that send any sparks flying? Even just one? Well, it surely sent his taste buds spinning, but probably not for the reason she wanted. Yeah, Ramsey spat it out and declared it disgusting right then and there. Carrie's attempt at culinary creativity took an unexpected nosedive. Well, maybe unexpected for her, but me? I saw that coming a mile away. But alas, her hopes were dashed as she lost the round to Will. Dude probably could have won if he served a single slice of buttered toast, but hey, a win's a win. And to add insult to injury, the red team's luck didn't fare any better overall, losing the challenge five to six. And what was their punishment? Preparing house kitchen for the opening, cleaning both kitchens. Got it? Cleaning both kitchens in preparation for the upcoming opening night. I'd say that was harsh, but I mean, let's take another good look at those potatoes. Yeah, no, I think it's a punishment well deserved. But next, you'll see that Ramsey couldn't hold back from laughing once he finally pieced together the inspiration behind this next disastrous looking dish. <laughs> <laughs> Carissa Schmerler stepped up as the sixth contender from the red team, ready to face Ramsey's judgment in a culinary showdown against Michael. But as soon as Ramsey had even the barest glimpse of her dish, this is how he reacted. Cookies. What in the f is that? <laughs> Not a great start, Carissa. So, what was her grand creation? Well, take a look at this. That is ginger frosted chicken. I was in the cookie aisle. I was trying to get ideas and I have ginger cookies. Ramsey, in his signature style, cheekily noted that at least she hadn't sought inspiration from the pet food aisle. A small blessing, perhaps. She's got Roseanne in shambles at the very least. However, when Ramsey finally sampled her dish, the reaction was far from what she had hoped for. Oh. Oh, really? Oh, oh no. Oh my god, really? Oh. I mean that is hideous. Sorry. Now, I'm sure you've already guessed how awful the whole thing will be just based on how it sounded. In 
Ramsey quickly corroborated that idea, spitting out the food and proving everyone's guesses. Krissa, who wasn't accustomed to having her cooking met with such disdain, scored only one point for her effort, a moment that undoubtedly left her feeling a mix of embarrassment and disappointment. As the challenge unfolded, the red team couldn't pick up the pace. Despite their collective efforts, they fell short, losing the challenge by a close margin of 28 to 31. At least Roseanne had the luxury of getting carried. And what was their punishment, you ask? Well, here you go. Yep, yep. <coughs> you will be stuffing and licking all night long. <laughs> yep. It was a task that didn't involve cooking, but was certainly no walk in the park. The team was tasked with resetting the dining room for the upcoming opening night, and in a quirky twist, they sealed confirmation letters in envelopes as part of their penance. Well, let's hope they're forgiven for their culinary sins, yeah? But if you thought dog food was bad, then how about this next contestant who served rabbit food instead? Now, Virginia is stepping into the signature dish challenge, the 12th and final contender, ready to showcase her culinary prowess to none other than the one and only Gordon Ramsay. Just like everyone else so far. And like everyone else so far, you can probably guess how well that went for her. Now, her dish of choice? Well, watch this. Mine, chef. What is it? It's my coconut and pomegranate celery root salad. Hold on a second, did someone say salad? Yeah, you heard that right. A salad in the midst of a competition of this scale. But hold on to your taste buds because this wasn't any ordinary salad. Well, here's why. The nuts are toasted. The nuts are toasted? Yes. Oh, f me. Virginia brought to the table, as Ramsey put it, was fine as far as rabbit food goes. Okay, well, let me explain what exactly Ramsey meant. It was raw, crunchy, and, well, not exactly the kind of salad that could wow him. But hey, he wasn't completely bashing it, as he admitted that it had a certain level of crunchiness going for it. That's better than everyone else so far, right? Now, here's where it gets interesting. Even though Ramsey had given a rather neutral verdict, Virginia remained steadfast in her pride for her dish. Hmm starting to sense a pattern here. Anyway, she wasn't about to let Ramsey's rabbit food comment get her down. In fact, she boldly proclaimed that her salad was so unique that a rabbit wouldn't dare touch it. Why, you ask? Well, it had the audacity to contain coconut milk, clearly something that was transformative and innovative. Well, as far as rabbit food was concerned. But I don't know, you guys. I think any rabbit on Earth would be honored to indulge in her cuisine. As far as Ramsey is concerned, though, well, come find me when he sprouts some buck tea. Well, anyway, this next chef challenged herself and Ramsey, assuming that he wouldn't be able to figure out what it was due to his lack of experience with Indian cuisine. However, Ramsey surprised her by revealing some of his culinary adventures in India. Man, that's gotta be like when you hear someone insulting you in a foreign language that you just so happen to know. Safe to say, Ramsey was gonna flip the script. In the heat of the signature dish challenge, Holly Ugalde had a plan. A step up from your everyday Hell's Kitchen contestant for sure. To bring in the cute factor. But make no mistake, she was more than prepared to roll up her sleeves and work as hard as anyone else. Little did she know, she was about to have an amusingly awkward encounter with Ramsey. As Ramsey started to get a bit cozy with a female chef, Holly couldn't resist a lighthearted remark. That aside, though, let's fast forward to the pivotal moment when Holly's dish faced the ultimate judgment, Ramsey's discerning taste buds. She presented her creation, a banana leaf wrapped halibut to Ramsey with a mix of anticipation and confidence. But alas, Ramsey's reaction was far from what she expected. In a surprising move, he trashed the banana leaf, clearly not impressed. Holly, a bit taken aback by Ramsey's response, tried to save face by explaining it. It's a, like a classic Indian dish. I've been to India. I haven't seen food like that. It's Northern Indian. Northern Indian? I believe, yeah, yeah, Northern Indian. However, Ramsey, not one to be easily convinced, dropped the bombshell that he'd never seen such a dish during his many visits to India. Talk about a curveball. Now, you must be curious to know how it tasted. Well, leave it to Ramsey to explain it better than anyone else. I believe it um, has... Holly's confidence wavered. She admitted that she messed up the dish slightly. 
I messed it up a bit. You messed it up a bit? Yes, I did. Being polite. Man, and just when I thought everyone I was gonna talk about on this was gonna stick to their guns. Anyway, Ramsey, ever the candid critic, noted her politeness, but wasted no time in tossing the entire dish. Unfortunately, this round didn't go in Holly's favor, because, like, obviously, losing the challenge to Benjamin. When you serve up a culture on a plate in Hell's Kitchen, you better hope it's authentic. Cause Ramsey's been around the world and back, and has himself been humbled by masters of cultural cuisine before learning everything he could from them. You better come ready with that same sort of cultural firepower, or, well, you're done. But we've got yet another chef throwing down Indian cuisine, who this time was actually Indian. But despite that, she couldn't succeed, even with a dish so close to her cultural heart. Stop me if you've heard this one before. In the heat of the signature dish challenge, Krupa Patel found herself grappling with nerves and a racing clock. Like those 45 minutes went by like that. 15 seconds to go! With the pressure on, she stepped up as the fourth contestant from the red team to present her dish to Ramsey. Little did she know, she was in for a hell of a ride. Facing off against Paul, Krupa showcased her dish with a mixture of anticipation and anxiety. However, Ramsey's initial reaction didn't exactly sing her dish's praises. It doesn't exactly look appetizing, does it? No. No, it's like you've got four bits of <laughs> on a plate, splat. <laughs> The presentation left him visibly shocked, which was a horrible start to everything. As she unveiled her dish, a traditional stuffed non bread, Ramsey's unfiltered critique was swift and biting. Undeterred, Krupa held on to a glimmer of hope as Ramsey tasted her dish. Unfortunately, his verdict was no less harsh. He found the spices to be raw and lacking in flavor, leaving the dish bland and unimpressive overall. Spices are raw, bland, my dear Cooper. Yeah, that is crapper. In a humorous but brutally honest twist, Ramsey coined a new term for the dish, crappa. With that, he dramatically trashed the dish, adding an extra layer of humiliation to Krupa's already shattered confidence. As the weight of the moment hit her, Krupa couldn't hold back her emotions any longer. Tears of disappointment and frustration flowed freely as she grappled with the knowledge that she was capable of so much more. I mean, how many nons do you think she's made before? I bet that a guess in the hundreds would be lowballing it. Anyway, in this round, victory eluded her as Ramsey declared Paul the winner of the challenge. And again, it's gotta be rough screwing up something you've made thousands of times before. That's really gotta shatter your ego and make you question your abilities. But there you have it, a stomach-churning tour of some of the culinary nightmares that have graced Hell's Kitchen. From unthinkable ingredient mashups to shockingly repulsive presentations, these dishes redefine the limits of gastronomic audacity. A catastrophe, if you will. A gastrosity, even. Anyway, if you're feeling rather adventurous, just remember, Hell's Kitchen is always ready to serve up a side of culinary chaos. So, do you know of any other contestants who've served extremely disgusting dishes in Hell's Kitchen? I mean, there's a minimum of like one per episode, so we barely scratched the surface here. Anyway, let me know in the comments down below who you want me to cover next. And before you head out, if you enjoyed my video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And if you thought this video was crazy, don't forget to check out this next post right here. It's even crazier.